Since July, the James Webb Space Telescope has been wowing the world with its stunning images from space, including incredible peaks of the Cartwheel Galaxy, 13 billion year old galaxies, the Tarantula Nebula, and the planet Jupiter. However, Webb never focused its camera on the planet we have been studying so closely, Mars. In this video, we take a look at the incredible first images of the red planet from the newly launched James Webb Space Telescope. Stay tuned and watch as this video is going to blow your mind. But before we begin with the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell for the latest notifications and updates. With that said, let's dig right into today's content. The James Webb Space Telescope was successfully launched in December 2021 and has now sent back the first images of the red planet. It has been a long time coming, but we eventually have our first images of Mars from the most powerful telescope in the world. JWST sent back both images and a spectrum of the red planet which were captured on September 5, 2022. Of all the things that JWST can safely observe without blowing out its detectors, Mars is pretty much the closest possible meaning that it's one of the brightest things that JWST will ever be pointed at. From L2, where Webb orbits a point in space almost a million miles from Earth, it can see a portion of Mars called its observable disk. It's the part of the planet that's sunlit and facing the telescope looking at this disk. And because it's so close to Earth, Webb can even take images with high resolution to study short-term features and phenomena including dust storms, seasonal changes, and weather patterns. The incredible brightness of the planet does pose challenges since the telescope is incredibly sensitive and designed to also image the faintest, most distant galaxies in the universe. So it has to be careful when looking at Mars not to destroy its own instruments by letting in too much light. The bright infrared light from Mars can cause the detectors to become saturated. To combat this, JWST only takes incredibly short exposures of the planet and then combines lots of these observations to create the images we see. These images were both taken by James Webb's infrared camera instrument in near-infrared light and show the eastern hemisphere of the planet. In this image, we see two different wavelength images of Mars from JWST. In the longer 4.3 micron wavelength image, we see the entire hemisphere's thermal emission given off as the planet loses heat. The incredibly bright yellow areas are where the detector has reached its saturation limit and is blowing out, and this shows us the hottest areas of the planet and its thin atmosphere here. This is the hottest place because the sun was directly overhead, and it's so bright that every pixel is surrounded by a diffraction spike. You can see that closer to the poles, the brightness decreases simply because these areas typically receive less sunlight, and indeed the northern part is less bright than the southern hemisphere, because when this image was taken, it was winter in the north. It's not just temperature that affects the brightness though, but the atmosphere also plays a part, as the light must travel through the atmosphere to reach Webb. Lots of the light that would be visible in the 4.3 micron image can be absorbed by carbon dioxide in the atmosphere before it ever reaches us, so areas with lots of atmospheric CO2 will look darker in this image. That's exactly why Heller's Basin looks darker in this image. It's not a thermal effect of the huge creature, but rather an atmospheric one since the basin is a crater. It's at a lower altitude than the surrounding areas, so it experiences a higher air pressure. This leads to more absorption of certain wavelengths of light, and hence this area looks darker because we're receiving less light. Talking of the atmosphere, let's look at the spectrum we receive from Mars. This was created by looking at light from all over the planet, breaking that light down into its separate wavelength, and looking at how much light we receive. In each of those wavelengths, basically the higher the line is at a certain point, the more of that wavelength of light we saw, and big dips in the line can tell us exactly what elements make up the atmosphere and the planet's surface. We really saw that Mars is definitely full of lots of gases that would be too toxic to us, like carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide too. We also saw features in the spectrum that tells us water vapor is also present in the atmosphere. And it's always interesting to hear the words water and Mars in the same sentence. With further analysis, because all of this is very preliminary, at the moment this can tell us about exactly what kind of rocks are on the planet's surface, what makes up its icy clouds, the composition of the atmosphere, and of course, the most important question on everyone's lips, what is Martian dust made of? That's all for this video though, hope you enjoyed watching this one, thanks for watching.